Greetings folks and welcome back to the Electromaker Show. My name's Ian Buckley and this is your midweek roundup of all things maker and embedded and fun and lovely. This week we're looking at some projects and of course some things on crowd supply and Kickstarter and announcing another winner of the mystery box competition. So let's get started. To start this week's show, we're gonna look at a couple of the projects on the Electromaker website that caught my eye over the week. In fact, there was way too many projects that caught my eye to cover them all, so I'm just gonna go for the ones that are nearest and dearest to my heart. Um, uh, but just a quick reminder, if you're not already a member of the electromaker.io website, um, join up, it's free to do so, and you can post your projects there for the whole community. But yes, this is a granular synthesizer that is built using an Arduino. This could not be closer to my particular set of interests. Um, it was made by Charis Cat, who's a maker based in Devon in the UK, and she's uploaded this project, which is uh, a pretty feature complete thing, it looks like. I mean, um, on her YouTube channel, she covers the breadboarding and uh, the general putting together of it. And obviously I can't play that now in this video, but go and check that video out. All of the sounds from the video were made using the synthesizer she is building in the video. It's very cool indeed. Now, anyone who's familiar with modular synthesis will realize how cool it is that she's added CV ins to the project. Now, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, CV stands for control voltage, and essentially that is how one part of a synthesizer can control or change another. And she's implemented this by using something called a Vactrol. Now, even if you're not into music synthesis, there's a few things in this project that I think you'll find interesting. She's used a Vactrol for the CV input. Now, that is essentially uh, one LED and one light dependent resistor taped together so no light can get in from any other source. And whenever the LED flashes, the light dependent resistor picks it up. And what you've essentially done is decoupled two parts of the circuit. So it doesn't matter what kind of voltages you're putting in, you're gonna get a readable voltage on the other side and you're never gonna fry your Arduino or whatever you're using inside your device in order to take uh, signals. This is the kind of thing that I love the Maker community for. Like whether it's on Electromaker or whether it's on Instructables, I'm, I spend a lot of time reading tutorials about things that I have no intention of ever making and aren't necessarily my interest. But these little details like this homemade Vactrol sometimes the perfect solution to something else that I wanted to do in the first place. And uh, yeah, um, I would highly recommend reading this tutorial, heading to her YouTube channel. Um, I will make sure both of these things are linked in the description. Um, but moving on to this project using a Raspberry Pi and a camera to win at Scrabble. Now, I'm not necessarily a particularly competitive person, but when it comes to Scrabble, I do like to win. Um, and I also have messed around with Raspberry Pi uh, computer vision in the past, trying to get TensorFlow to recognize characters through a live camera feed. I had limited success, but that was more down to my failing than any capability of the Raspberry Pi, the camera, or the TensorFlow library. This project made by Deb's cover essentially uses a Raspberry Pi camera and a Raspberry Pi in order to look at all of the letters you have in a game of Scrabble and give you all the legal words that you could play in any moment. It is a fantastic project. It uses a library called Tesseract, which I'm not particularly familiar with. And um, I, yeah, I suggest you check it out. As I said before, I will make sure that the link to both the Electromaker project and the YouTube channel is in the description. And oh, that's me, that's weird. Anyway, just before moving on, I wanted to mention the AIY voice and vision challenge that we're running on the Electromaker website. I know I covered this briefly last week, but I just wanted to mention that if you were one of the people that um, applied to get the uh, Google hardware from us, it is getting sent out this week. Hopefully you're seeing on screen now uh, lots and lots of lovely vision and voice kits which are ready to be sent out. And remember that even if you didn't get hardware from us, if you have a voice or vision kit or you've ever wanted to get one and you still want to take part in the competition, you absolutely can. Uh, the competition is open until sometime in August. Yeah, that's right. August 14th is the submission date for writing up your project if you want to take part in the Google Voice and Vision AIY competition. Um, I will also be taking part, not in the competition, but I will be playing with the Google AIY and doing some project or other, which I will show you on the show in the coming weeks, because why not? It's cool. And while we're talking about cool projects on the internet, something showed up on Reddit that caught my eye this week, which is this 3D printed marble machine. Now, um, I don't know if you can see from the quality of the video on Reddit, but this is a completely uh, mechanical machine in that it's just two 3D printed pieces that fit on top of each other and create the movement of the marbles when you move them up and down. So of course I had to find out who made this and how do I get to have one myself. It turns out it is the creation of Yasuki Ikeda, apologies if I'm mispronouncing your name, 
And uh, he has made so many fantastic, lovely little machines. He's a, an actor and a maker, seems like a, a wonderful character. And um, his YouTube channel shows various variations of these 3D printed machine, machines, some of which use marble, some of which are kinetic works of art. And the, uh, an extended version of the original Reddit video is also available on his YouTube channel, which I will link. The super exciting thing is the files for making this are now up on Thingiverse. So if you have a 3D printer or access to a 3D printer, you can print one yourself, which is exactly what I will be doing as soon as I can get into my local makerspace. In terms of other cool projects, it's time for a slightly bonkers one. If you're watching this channel, I imagine you're also familiar with the DIY Perks channel. He's amassed 2 million subscribers over several years of making fantastic projects and showing you how he's done them. And this week he's completely outdone himself. He has built a 4K projector, essentially with one high-powered LED, one old mobile phone, and a couple of Fresnel lenses. Um, and he claims it's about 10 times uh, less costly than an actual professional 4K projector. Now, I'm not going to look into that and fact check that. That's not important. The fact is that this is an insane build. And not only has he gone through the troubleshooting that he, it must have taken to get it to work, and he takes you on that journey with him, he shows you step by step how to build it and makes it look easy. And as any of you who've tried to work on a project and troubleshoot something have probably learned, it's not. So um, this guy really doesn't need any uh, big ups from me. This video is currently number 28 on trending, but you have to appreciate how much work must have gone into this project. And uh, every single thing he's put out, I have enjoyed. It's one of my favorite YouTube channels. And on the off chance you haven't heard of him by this point, I suggest you check him out. And now it is time for the mystery box competition. If you're not familiar, we have a mystery box full of random things that are linked to the maker and embedded world, some of which might be the exact development board that you want and maybe can't afford or just haven't got around to buying yet, some of which are peripherals which are connected to things which are no longer made anymore probably and are useless to everybody. So it's a bit of a 50-50 competition, but if you would like to enter, the way you do is by writing a comment on this video saying, I would like to win what is in the mystery box, please. Why did I say that in such a weird, creepy way? I would like to win what's in the mystery box, please. And right now we're going to pick the prize for the people who entered the competition last week. So the first thing we need to do is get the mystery box. So um, I'm going to do the same thing as I did last week. I'm going to just try and pick something out as randomly as possible. The random uh, bits of uh, paper are still on the top and I'm still trying to do my best to not spoil it for me as well. And I know that's going to be impossible as the weeks go on. Eventually I'm going to have to look in the box and make sure there's still things in the box to give away. That hasn't even occurred to me at this point, yeah. Okay, so I'm digging down and... Wait, that can't... is that the bottom? No, that's too shallow. Oh, that's a box? That's a big box. That's a big box. What's this? Ooh! This is a Zigbee cloud kit. And these things are pretty legit, as far as I remember. So, having looked it up, this is the XB Zigbee Cloud Kit, which is basically the tinkerers and developers end of the Zigbee platform. I haven't got any experience with Zigbee, actually. I know friends that had it in their house. But this looks like it would be right up my street. You have your little hub here for connecting to the internet via Wi-Fi or Ethernet, and you have your development breakout board here for doing development breakout board type things. So, now we have the prize for this week. What we need is a prize winner. Much like last week, I took all of the names of the people I entered, put them into an Excel spreadsheet, and then randomized that list to give them all random numbers. But human randomness is no good. We need computer randomness. So this week, I used the rather lovely p5.js web editor to make a very, very simple choice of the random numbers of entrants that we had. Running the sketch spits out the number two, and the number two person on my spreadsheet was Gary Fuller. Congratulations, Gary. We'll be in touch with you about how to get this thing out to you. So yes, this week's prize, kinda cool, Zigbee Development Kit. Next week's prize, potentially useless, no idea. If you'd like to take part, leave a comment saying I would like to win what's in the mystery box, please. But for now, let's get on with the show. And now onto a section called things that aren't exactly crowdfunded but are still cool and we should probably talk about them anyway. Oh, names, names, names. So, those of you who are savvy with the Arduino world probably had the same thing happen to you as happened to me, which was as soon as the ESP8266 uh, baseboards uh, came out and became as cheap and widely available as most Arduinos, you kind of got obsessed with them and stopped using regular Arduino boards for a while. Now, some of you probably also had that same level of excitement when the ESP32 boards came out, which were more powerful in almost every single way. However, there was a caveat in that you couldn't program them via USB, so you had to use an FTDI breakout, which is fine. Fine, but not as convenient as just plugging something into a USB port. Now, the ESP32-S2 changes that. 
This is the new chip from Espressif. It's now available and there are a couple of development boards featuring it already. Now, I'm not going to do a strong AB of the original ESP32 versus the S2. There are other people who will be able to do that better than me, and we don't really have time for that on this show. One thing I will say that I noticed is uh, Bluetooth Low Energy, which uh, was just there, was just there. Uh, no, it's not. No more Bluetooth Low Energy, which is weird, because it seems like that's something that a lot of people are getting kind of excited about now. But that's cool. It's not something that I'm going to miss particularly. Having said that, the week after I get this board, I bet I just get so into Bluetooth low energy, like it's going to be the only thing I want to do. Anyway, needless to say, this board does look very, very impressive. There is already a couple of variations that are becoming available for it for development. Uh, the ESP32 S2 Saola 1 is the one that I will be getting. It is, in fact, the one that I have already pre-ordered uh, for the lovely price of only €7.20, which, again, uh, for the amount of power that you're getting from these boards is bonkers cheap. I still find it amazing that things like this are sold that cheap. Anyway, as I said, I'm not going to go through all of the details here because there are other people that can do it better than me. In fact, someone who always does things like this better than me is Andreas Spies and his channel, again, is one I'm sure that you are familiar with. He has a very thorough video comparing the new ASP32 uh, to the original one and what it means for us makers. Um, so this video not only is full of information, but it's exactly tailored for people like me, which makes it fantastic and I think you will like it too. Um, I will put a link to that in the description of this video. This show has been quite project heavy, but we couldn't really have a show without a section called Things that are on funding websites that may or may not be already funded or have been funded before I started making this show, but now I'm going to talk about them anyway because they're cool. Uh. Now, the ULX3S was already funded on Crowdsupply long before I started making this show, but it is something still worth talking about, uh, partially because they've just said that their PCBs are ready and they're just waiting for their parts to come in and then they're going to start making them and sending them out to their funders, but partially just because this is a really nicely thought out board. Now, those wanting to get into the FGPA uh, programming world have probably noticed a couple of things. One is that there are very few boards that seem to be learner friendly, really. That is changing for sure, but there isn't, yeah, not that many. And also they're quite expensive. Now uh, this board at $115 or uh, 155 if you get the full kit isn't exactly cheap compared to your other development boards, but you're getting a lot more than your regular microcontroller. And this board is actually designed sort of with teaching in mind, as far as I can tell. Um, there's, it seems like a very nice collection of things that you could use for learning. Now, I, I haven't even started looking into how to do FGPA stuff myself. It's frankly a little bit above my intelligence level right now. It is something I'm interested in, and I do actually have um, a different dev board on, uh, on the way, which I unfortunately got uh, ordered before this thing came along. But I'm very tempted to get one of these as well, because as I've mentioned many times before, I have a problem, but also because it's really cool. There's a few things about this board which may not be absolutely unique to the board. They're claiming it can do things that no other board can do, but I'm not going to verify that. But for example, there is an ESP32 built into this board, meaning that you can reprogram it over the air. Now that is something that, for me, I love the idea of just being able to have it in place, connect a whole load of stuff to it, and then just send the program over your Wi-Fi. I like the idea of doing that. And it does have a 3.5 millimeter jack for audio. It's got a digital video, uh, GPDI, General Purpose Differential Interface, which is something, again, I'm not particularly familiar with, but I think it's I2C. Um, and uh, Wi-Fi wi and Bluetooth on the board, along with an analog to digital converter, which is 12 channels and 8 bit. Nope. 8 channels and 12 bit. Names and numbers, I'm such a professional. It also has an onboard battery backed clock, which means that you can basically put it completely to sleep and have it wake up just for certain events, be them timed or interrupt. As you can probably tell from the way I'm talking about this, this is a little bit out of my area of expertise at this stage. However, in terms of something that made me actually think this could be a one-size-fits-all way of getting into FGPA programming, this certainly uh, fitted it for me. And even though this has already been backed and funded, you can still order this through the Crowd Supply website. I'll be leaving a link to it in the description. And if any of you are interested in this kind of stuff and you have an opinion about how you think this kind of board is, please do leave it in the comments of this video. I'm genuinely interested in learning more about it. And if any of you have expertise in that field, please reach out to me. I'd love to talk to you. Briefly, moving back to Crow Pi 2, which I covered a couple of weeks ago. Um, as I said in that video, um, I'm super excited about it. The first Crow Pi was fantastic. I still use it to this day. And the Crow Pi 2 looks cool. 
I'm not going to go over it all again. You can see on the screen right now that the Kickstarter is now live and that's all I wanted to tell you. If you want to back this, you can back it on Kickstarter right now. And uh, they're already doing pretty well, actually. They're already at 12,000 euros out of their 17,000 euro goal. Um, but uh, as I said last time, uh, the last Kickstarter for Crow Pie was smooth. They, they, they funded it, they launched it, and it's something that I personally think is a good product. Can't vouch for this one, it's new, but they have got some solid stuff going on, Ella Crow. I like them, I do. And finally today, I make no secret of my love for everything the Bella Project does. Both of their boards that they brought out are fantastic, and I've waxed lyrical about the Bella Mini before, and their Trill touch sensors that they launched on Kickstarter are now shipping out to backers. Um, I actually happen to have a couple of them here, because of course I do. Um, and these are little capacitive touch sensors that are very, very high resolution. They work via I2S. They are very easy to use, essentially, because they have a, a library designed for use with the Bella platform. However, since they are I2S, they also will work with Raspberry Pi, they'll work with Arduino, they'll work with anything that supports I2S. So yeah, these things, I haven't had a chance to play with it yet. I really am excited about doing so. So this one is essentially just a touch sensor, you know, gives you position across it. It is multi-touch, so you can get multi-touch sensors. In fact, instead of showing you hardware that isn't plugged into a camera, maybe I should just show you the GIFs on the Kickstarter page. Um, so yeah, these are high resolution uh, touch bars, and there are several different ones in the Trill family, as they call it. Um, all of them, as far as I know, all of them multi-touch sensors, but um, there's different axis of movement in the uh, Trill Square. The Trill Craft is one that I think is cool. Um, again, got one of those here right now. This is essentially a capacitive touch breakout board. Anything conductive, you can plug into it and it'll work. It's not dissimilar to the Makey Makey, I guess, in that regard, but the fact that these things are compatible with absolutely everything and you can use them in conjunction with your own normal Arduino project or, as I plan to do, as part of some wild uh, gestural-based touch synthesizer that I'll be making with a Bella, these things are lovely. I am definitely a fan of Bella and I am definitely biased. This isn't some uh, neutral review here. And as I said, I haven't even had a chance to play with these things yet. They look good, they feel good, but I don't know how well they work. But I just have a general nice feeling about the entire Bella project. Everything they do seems to be done with love or at least with some kind of intrigue involved. It was from a research project to begin with and long after that research project is uh, over and all of the people are far flung into different places in the world working on different projects, they are still creating beautiful things and putting up free educational content on the internet. I've got a lot of time for that company. That's it for this week's show. Thank you so much for joining me. Let me know what you like about the show and especially let me know what you don't like in the comment section below. That's also where you can enter the mystery box competition. Um, also, head to the Electromaker website if you haven't already. There's a wealth of great projects on there and you can create yourself an account. Um, but for now, I hope you're healthy. I hope you're safe. Stay creative and have a great week.